One of the primary things on my list is getting all the wire bundles tidied um, and sort of finalized. I've, I've allowed myself just to leave things a little messy thinking, well, I might have to go in and mess with it or reroute route something or uh, run a new wire. And the merit of that excuse is slowly going to fade as it becomes more and more evident that these need to be stowed away so that I can continue on finishing the cockpit. One of the preliminary things that I need to get done in order to do that is addressing the fuel pump tube that I wanted to replace. So I'll replace that, see how it fits, and see if we can't get the uh, wire bundles and fuel and brake tubing throughout the center tunnel complete. This is rough. And I'm not trying to be dramatic. No, I just really like straight up for a documentation standpoint, um, I'm at a spot that's really rough. It's, you know, the, the fun and glory of turning the whole system on and configuring it is now gone. Yeah, I still have an immense amount of wiring to do. I've got all these switches to wire. I still have some other runs that I failed to make. Um, and they got to get done and the the light at the end of the tunnel is sort of gone it's rough I will say this uh, get as much in your initial harness as you can because there's a number of things that that I left out and I figured I would just kind of wire it in situ which I'm doing now it is ten times harder uh, and I don't even have this thing closed up but to sit there and sew these cords through existing bundles um there was a lot that i i thought it would be easier to figure it out in the plane for example all my switches i should have just wired them all in and had a big group of wires coming out of the dash and i could have trimmed them to length instead i didn't know what was going to go where and i figured ah, eh, i'll hit that later now every single switch i've got one at least two three wires that i've got to get through back through all of this and it's a lot more difficult same thing with my trim position sensors, uh, for example. Um, I figured that's something that could wait. I don't know why, it's just being lazy, but um, doing it after is a lot more difficult. 
Also weighing on me uh, is another Stein order from things that uh, I'm running out of or I need. Um, and quite frankly, the, uh, the incidental charges through this whole avionics thing have, have run my incidental budget dry. And so uh, there's no need to worry about the project. Well, I will, I will get this thing through the finish line. It certainly made things uh, vastly more uncomfortable than I wish it had. And, and to that note, uh, somebody brought up in the comments, like, let's take a look at that. I will, as soon as all this is done, we're gonna, we're gonna do a great debrief on what was spent and what was worth it and what was unexpected. Um, I think that'll be helpful for a lot of folks. Until then, I'm not gonna film a whole lot of this um, because I don't want you to be stuck with like three to five episodes of me just bitching about how much work this is. Uh, I'm gonna zip through it as fast as I can, some of it off camera because that'll help speed uh, and nobody wants to watch me with my you know, hands in the dashboard for four hours. I'm just gonna get it done. We're just gonna power through, get it done. That's the theme of the day. Um, I super, I, I thought I was gonna come in and just kick this thing's balls and it's kicking mine instead. That's what's happening here. All right, back to it. All right, um, I think it's easy to see where I'm going with this. Haha. <laughs> Another satisfying clunk added to the plane. Now that won't turn an engine for some time, but eventually we will, we will get there. Uh, I've been a little hard on myself at times um, about jumping the gun on installing the harness and maybe not uh, completing a little more on the bench. Now, 
I'm learning that there was always going to be things that are wired in situ in the plane. Uh, you simply can't account for all of it and you will, uh, without a doubt, wind up doing a lot of just wiring within the cockpit. Um, and it, it's honestly not that bad. It's, I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I'm like a pig and shit over here. Um, it really is, despite my perpetually grumpy face, it's what I like to be doing and it's going to be sad when it's all done. Uh, and I have to go back to riveting, although I probably at that point will enjoy it. Uh, guessing what's in the box, uh, in this case, way easier if you can see what's behind this box. And I tell you that they go together. Uh, the garage is getting very tight. There's not a lot of room for more boxes, uh, but I'm eager about this one. I'm gonna open it up and see what's inside. This thing is really, it's a nice piece of craftsmanship. And I'm surprised. Uh, I've seen some folks installing um, spinners and uh, it's, to me, it, it seems like a lot of the work that I have seen some folks do is done for me in this instance. Um, boy, that is gonna look freaking cool. What a fantastic piece of work. Well, I uh, would love to also open up the prop, um, but I gotta be a little practical on this one. And if I have to move that thing, if I have to, God forbid, sell it and ship it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna absolutely hate myself for destroying the crating that it's in. I will note this. I haven't completely disregarded all the arrows that say it should not be facing the direction it's in. Uh, I was working with whirlwind propellers. They, they let me know this is a perfectly acceptable method of storing it. Uh, you do not want to transport it like that because you risk it falling down. Um, but again, uh, the manufacturer themselves said, yeah, go ahead, lean it on the wall, mount it to the wall if you want. Um, just don't let it fall flat on its face. I'm going to find a safe spot for this. Um, and I will get back to the plane after uh, a few more short minutes of drooling on this thing. It is just cool. Yeah. As I mentioned, I've left the camera out of a lot of work, but I do want to go through some of the things that I've tackled. Um, I have 99%, dare I say, of the wiring complete. This is everything from switches and lighting to uh, even getting wiring run out through the forward uh, side of the, the firewall. I've learned a lot about uh, making sure that I don't push things off thinking they'll be easier later on. They won't be. And you can imagine how hard it would be to do wiring through the panel if I were to say, have uh, put my top skin on here. And that could be the case if I wait to do the wiring for a lot of the engine control module until I hang the engine. So I've gone ahead and run all my thermocouple leads up through the front of the firewall. This is everything for cylinder head temps, exhaust gas temps. I've also went and run all my pressure sensors through the firewall and got them hooked up and even configured within the Garmin system.
this is everything for an oil pressure, uh, fuel pressure, manifold pressure, everything that hooks into that pressure transducer manifold that I bolted to the front of the firewall some time ago. Getting those set up in the G3X system was fairly easy and kind of fun. Um, and there is still some more configuring to do there uh, as far as mins and maxes go and, and what sort of green and yellow and red ranges we want on the instrument panel um, and the screens that, that show those. But I'm holding off on that a little bit for now. Also in the G3X system was getting an initial set of databases uploaded. Now I had previously updated all the software, but separate from that, uh, are two sets of databases. Uh, one set of databases for the G3X system, the G3X touch screens, uh, and a separate set for the IFR navigator, the GNX375 that I'm using. They're similar databases. They run everything from terrain to uh, flight navigation and airport info, um, but they are discrete and separate from each other uh, on this system. I ran into a little bit of trouble getting those loaded. This was all self-induced and had nothing to do with Garmin, though I will say they were extremely helpful in trying to locate the problem, which turned out to be um, low disk space on my computer uh, that was interfering with the read-write process to the SD card. Uh, one of the things that they did recommend was that I get different SD cards, and, and I thought it'd be worth mentioning. I have had success using the 32 gigabyte um, standard definition, I think they're called the, the sort of old technology sand disk uh, SD cards. You definitely don't want the newest ones and you definitely don't want too large. 32 gigabyte worked for me, though Garmin said to be safe, you really want to be using eight gigabyte. Another issue that I had uh, ran into was with the G5 and the battery backup. Uh, I tried uh, unsuccessfully to get a charge to my battery and it never would pick one up and the system would never uh, recognize that I had a battery installed. It does appear that Garmin has struggled with batteries for the G5 system and I think we're on a third version and and when I was uh, first trying to troubleshoot this uh, I came across a slew of stuff on the internet about all the difficulties they've had in the past. I will say again Garmin has been excellent about stepping in and replacing that battery. Uh, it's now in the mail and they should be shipping me a new one back and hopefully fingers crossed this one will work great. I'm going to keep powering away at this. Uh, if it's dull, I might not film it, but I will try to keep uh, as much content as I can to keep videos consistent. I know it's been a while on this one, um, but as you notice from some of my filming, I've gone through a bit of the doldrums lately of uh, not being super productive and, and just kind of being down on the build. Um, but it's bound to happen. I'm, I'm feeling energized now just in time for the weekend to end, um, but I, I'll, I'll hit it uh, vigorously coming up um, and we should have some fun stuff to go over soon. If you want to be able to see that, make sure you're subscribed and you're getting notifications on. I would love to hear uh, from y'all uh, what you think of the build so far and what projects you're working on. Leave a comment down below. Share the video. That's huge. Um, if you know of somebody that uh, you think might be entertained by these, feel free to share the video out and of course give me a thumbs up. Until next time, uh, thanks for watching Ryan Fleiss.